All right, everyone, thank you for joining me today for another episode of Ash Conversations. Ash Conversations is an interview series that aims to capture the unique stories of all the Melee players that exist in the scene. Today, joining me, we will have Bizarro Flame from California. He started playing in the year 2007, and he's really known as the Giffy Cat Master of Ganondorfs. He's had a lot of really impressive showings, you know, taking Armada to Game 3, being ranked in the Melee Anonymy Top 100 at Rank 98, and also famous for up-tilting an orange live on stream and up-tilting Eichelman in front of him before destroying the Basalti Suite. Thank you for joining me today, Jason. Hey, Ashcon. Thanks so much for having me on your channel. What's going on? What's going Not on? Not much. You know, uh, how you been lately? Yeah, it's been a little while since we've kind of seen you in the spotlight. Yeah, yeah. So I've just been taking care of personal matters and just... Uh, just been busy with a recent full-time position as an attorney at a uh, at a law firm in Los Angeles, actually. And um, and if you guys have been to my have, if you guys tuned into my stream in the past, my room looks different because I moved into a new place uh, earlier this much earlier this month, actually. So yeah, that's ba that's basically my my recent update in life. <laughs> All right. And uh, to start this all off, let's kind of go back and talk about the younger Jason Yoon. <laughs> so, what was life like growing up for you when you're, you know, a child and whatnot? You know, it's kind of interesting. I grew up so um, so for I guess for half of my childhood, I grew up in Koreatown, which which is located in Los Angeles. Is in the west is west of downtown Los Angeles, about I would say about five mile five to seven miles west, and and um, and I would say that I uh, that my experience with melee started when I when I went to middle school, and decided and uh, and when I went to middle school, like my life changed a lot because I moved from a predominantly Korean neighborhood to a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood with a good mix of Mexican Salvadorians and Guatemalans actually and it's uh, it was actually a new experience for me it was um, I definitely it definitely taught me how to get uh, get along with uh, get along with people from uh, from different ethnicities and cultures because at my junior high school and high school which was both of which were in the same area they were um, it was they had like every almost every ethnicity there actually there was a uh, uh, there were actually Chinese from Chinatown. There were there were uh, white Americans, uh, usually from from the area itself, and it was a uh, it was a very interesting uh, community actually. Like it wasn't the best school, but hey, it was a um, it was a great experience. And, and I guess uh, I had my own clique of uh, click of friends, and uh, actually they play they actually played melee before I did, and and um, and one of my and one of my best fr uh, best friends, uh, the Phenom, you might have heard of him. He was actually the one who who pretty much introduced me to melee, and he taught me, and he taught, and he was a really good player even before we knew about advanced techniques. It, it was amazing. It was um, he was he was a very smart player, and and uh, while we were while we were like learning about the advanced techniques and everything, he for some reason switched from. Like a switch from, I believe Mart, to Game Watch for some reason, and and we were all I guess uh, me and my click and click of friends we were just trying out different characters and see what suited us. Uh, I was definitely the worst player out of the group. Uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. You you wouldn't expect it, but I was the worst player in the group. I I played Ness. I played Fox. I tried out I tried out Roy. I tried out so many different characters. Uh, like. Before and during the advanced text, uh, uh, before and during the during the epiphany of uh, of competitive Smash, and eventually I picked up uh, Luigi. And actually, we had a high school tournament, and I, and even though it feels it, it feels poorly poorly run with a with a uh, semifinals of uh, semifinals of a uh, of a free for all of three people, <laughs> uh, because because we were running out of time, like I. Uh, I ended up getting second actually with Luigi, and I was really surprised at myself because I just, um, I just, um, usually I was the worst player out, out of the group. But then I think I still was at that point. It's just that I got lucky, lucky mm -hmm. in a way. 
And the thing is that for the three-player free-for-all, we thought that we were just eliminating uh, one person for the three-player free-for-all, but actually two two were eliminated, and my and me and the phenom were actually the the last two people left in the free-for-all. And then I and then we just messed around, and I I just ended up beating him. And I was just told that oh, I made it to the winner uh, to the grand finals pretty much. And then and then guess what? And guess who I had to play in grand finals? A chic player. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was actually a close, uh, close, uh, close match, um, and unfortunately I lost. But you know, um, chic was uh, what's it called chic was uh, that match against chic was definitely not my last match mm -hmm. against a chic player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for obvious know. reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this was back then in 2007. Keep that in mind. 2006, 2007, but yeah, but I I was basically the one who who watched who like picked up uh, Ken videos and just uh, watched it and just uh, went uh, discovered smash boards before learning the and then right at that moment I was learning about advanced techniques and I was telling my friends about it and they were starting to picking up pick it up as well, but but still I was still like the worst player there like I just uh, no matter how much I played I just could never improve it's just. It was sometimes aggravating for me, like especially because I was younger and I just, mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's just, um, it's just hard to have fun when you're not in the same level. But one day, one glorious day, I just, um, while we were playing, while we were, we were all just playing one versus ones, like I just decided, you know what? There's this one character with a, with a really big nose, and I just really want to, like I just want to try this character out. He looks muscular, he looks bulky, and he looks sexy for the ladies as well. So I just decided to pick Ganondorf, and then, and then right at that moment, I just started wrecking everyone, like, like everyone in my in my clique of friends, and it was it was amazing. I was like, there's so much power, there's so much, you know, there's just uh, so much girth, so much power, and just you know, like, I just felt it. I I really felt it. My, I mean, yeah, you, you get you get the point. You get the point. But yeah, just uh, yeah. really felt the. Really felt the power emanating from this character. So ever since then, I made as I made as Ganondorf, and mm -hmm. I've been doing pretty well. Um, uh, yeah. I, I would say, yeah, up in, up until this point. And um, you know, before you started playing Smash, did you do anything competitively, like sports or like? Was there any competitive nature in you from a younger age? Not really. Not really. You know, um, my actually my parents they were very overprotective of me, mm -hmm. like. They wouldn't let me go out of the of my house. Mm -hmm. I, I I couldn't even play play in the garage because they thought it was too dangerous for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I was a uh, I was a um, I was I was basically uh, pretty much um, under uh, like under the control of overprotective parents. Mm -hmm. It's 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 not it's not their fault per se because I guess some bad events happened in the, in the past. So. But then, uh, because of that, I wasn't able to explore much. But but because of melee, like I, I was able to interact with people a lot. I was able to go to different tournaments, and you know, like I think I I built up so much, so much real life skills and just uh, and a competitive nature that I'm applying it to my, uh, to my job as an attorney, and I'm just I'm just like hungry to learn more every day, and I treat and I treat my job as pretty much like how I treat melee, like. Like I treat it really seriously with uh, with with always the intention of getting better, but at the same time having fun at the same time, you know. And it's just it's just a great. I mean, it's just a great game. Except great you game. Uh, don't get to up tilt your the defendants in court, the people you're going against. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking about maybe introducing Exhibit A. <laughs> but I'm pretty. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that'll be a long time from now. <laughs> All right, so it seems like you know Melly is like a way for you to explore and just learn about all the interactions of life, which is really cool. And um, so, when you were playing in high school, though, when was it that you started going to tournaments outside of your school? Oh, you know? actually, uh, I would say that I didn't actually go out go outside and play in tournaments until two thousand nine. Actually, mm -hmm. like that's the time when I finished my first year at my college, UC Merced, mm -hmm. University of California Merced, and I picked up even more Smash friends there. But 
but we didn't we didn't really go out uh, go out of our region to play. But you know, the most interesting thing is that for my very first tournament outside of of my of locals, like like uh, I like I think my very first legit tournament was was Connor's tournament, which took place in this garage in Orange County, California. <laughs> so, uh, so for my first tournament, like during my summer vacation between my fr my freshman year and my sophomore year, I, um, yeah, I drove all the way down to um, uh, down there with my friend and and everyone, you know, everyone uh, for some reason people back then, I think they were just a little bit more cliquish, so so they didn't want to talk to people openly, and and it's just the way it is for a smaller community, you know. Mm -hmm. especially, especially for my first tournament, yeah. and then and then I remember this one person. I think his name was Freedom. Uh, <laughs> uh, old school SoCal players might know him, but um, I don't want to rub any. I don't want to toss any dirt on his uh, dirt on him. But then, but then it is what it is. And he actually, he he was actually talking talking to me at first. But and then I told him, and then he asked me, "Hey, what uh, what's your main, by the way?" And I said, "Oh, I main as Gandorf." And then he just kind of. He kind of turned his back pack against me, and he just walked away. I'm like, Meh, whatever. So, <laughs> it was kind of awkward, but but yeah. I, um, and then uh, and then after that, like I just um, I went into winners bracket. I beat like a lot of people actually, like for my first term at, during were the, the winners bracket. Were there any notable players along the way that are kind of still playing now? Yeah, there's there was Connor, there was um, there was Hugs, there was Mango, there was a, uh, um, I think there was Kira there, there was Lucky there. There were all the top players were actually all the top players in SoCal were actually playing like at the small tournaments because that's all they had back then. You know, that's all we had. Yeah. Yes. So, but even with players and Zoo was there also. I played Zoo in winners in winners bracket, pretty uh -huh. far into the winners bracket as well. You know. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, he actually played Falcon because he thought that he thought that it would be easy, easy money just playing, <laughs> just playing against against my Gandor. But then I, but then I actually beat his Falcon in the second match, so he had to switch to Falco. And then everyone was hyped because because he's is is Zoo. Zoo was one of the Zoo was arguably top two or top three in SoCal back then, mm -hmm. back in the days. Like he was really good, and he beat players. He played. He beat top players left and right, including including Kage like back then. So people were interested, and unfortunately, I lost pretty hard against him on, on Battlefield mm -hmm. for the third game. But hey, but, but people were getting really hyped, hyped about me, mm -hmm. and uh, ever since the first day of attending an attending an actual term, people got hyped, really hyped, and just because I played Gandorf, and even the Freedom guy who I mentioned before, he was he was acting like he's he's my biggest fan, <laughs> <laughs> just because I just because I won some some good matches, you know. And um, how was Ganon kind of respected as a character? around that time you know? oh everyone thought he was he was trash like even though he was uh even, even though it was universally accepted that he was middle of the mill tiers everyone just treated that character as trash and so and a lot of misinformed people actually came up to me and asked me like during my earlier years how do you play with such a low tier character and i just remind them hey this, he's not a low tier character he's actually mm -hmm. a mid tier character with some potential so um, so that's basically the bias that that almost everyone in the community had against Gandorf back then, uh, but with the uh, with the slight exception of those who were actually who were Kage fans back then, because Kage Kage was re uh, was really popular back then when I first started competitive Smash, actually, as mm -hmm. as, as a Gandorf player. Other than that, there were player like like Linguini, but I think I think Linguini was slowing down um, around that time. And. Um... Yeah, even Linguini though is still doing pretty well. Like at CEO this last week, and he took the set off McCain, which is pretty crazy. But um, but Ganon being considered like such a low tier back then, how did you find kind of inspiration to learn the character? Like, were there resources available and whatnot, and how did you go like to push the character to the next level? Well, Smash Bros really helped a lot with with great with like uh like amazing. Amazing Gandorf mains such as such as Ace. You had players like Ace. Kage helped here and there a little bit, um, but then he definitely had some good uh, good advice. Um, who else? Uh, there were there was Renth, Linguini, um, 
uh, Spider Sense was uh, was was the was up and coming, and you had like all these Gandalf mates who were really trying, who were really trying hard to help each other. Although I think that I think that we're we're general uh, we were generally lazy back then, and even nowadays we're still sort of lazy. But then, and then I guess you can say that about most about most Smash players, <laughs> uh, compa uh, compared to like uh, compared to hyper uh, really competitive. Uh, fighting games, I would say, like that's just my personal opinion. But but yeah, we had uh, Smash Force was was a great resource. But other than that, I just I just uh, push myself in order to find in order to implement techniques that people have never really implemented that much before, such as Waveland moonwalks and so on. And you guys have already you guys have probably watched Ganon on Ice and so on. And that was pretty, that was pretty much what I, what I kept on pushing out, and then um, and then uh, I kept on investing so much of my time during college into um, into this character because I believed in them. I I really did, you know. It it just felt like it just felt like a calling for me. And I thought that I can get get to somewhere far with Gandorf, and I would say and I was and I would say to this day that I think I did I did a pretty good job, but I'm still not. I'm still not fully satisfied with my own performance, so I'm just going. So even though if I have a full-time job as an attorney now, I'm still going to going to do um, do some lab research about even more about my character and even and about other characters. And I'm still going to try my best to push my character um, however much I can extend. All right, and um, that's good to hear, though. You know, like that you didn't really take it. You know, you never really took like the character to stop you from playing him, like his his, blah, like his uh, restrictions and whatnot, just because he's not a high tier. But was there ever a period where you wanted to like quit Ganon or no? Like you never wanted to give up. Oh, it's just, I guess there's there are those there are those few days. Like, I think everyone, I can I think every Smash player, in my opinion, had had question uh, had questionable concerns about their own character. Mm -hmm character's potential. E even Fox back then, even Fox was was considered as a character that was really good but could never win national. But look at Fox now. Look at Fox now. He's yeah. winning plenty of nationals nowadays because it's because the players believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I would just say that that I just um, I just really I really don't regret any minute that I put into my character because I'm just glad that I was able to inspire a lot of people to pick up Ganondorf and just and just to and just to not be afraid of picking up mid-tier characters. Mm -hmm. You know, just just don't be afraid. And and you know, you can be winners in other ways. You definitely can be winners in other ways. Like look at Prague and D1. Like their like their melee skills might might be questionable uh, compared to the top ten, but their but their commentary skills are amazing. Uh -huh. And you have and and you have a uh, and you have uh, community supporters, especially Crimson Blur, and uh, and, Mac, and Mac, Mac D, and even you, Ashcon. Like you guys make a huge amount of difference <laughs> in the Smash community. I'm not joking either. And I'm uh, and, and and let's not forget Andrew Wu and and Spencer yeah. Chung. They have um, they used to be part of part of the Foundry actually. Mm -hmm. Showdown G Showdowns GG, and they're they're wonderful. And everyone has a role in their community. Yeah. Just just because you're not good at this game doesn't mean that you can't contribute. You can you can probably you can pre you can probably contribute more than than the top fifty players mm -hmm. like in the skill in the in the in the in the, in the skill list. Be, um, just just by tapping into your tapping into your talent and just uh, contributing to the community that way. And and myself like I'm just glad I'm just really glad that I'm able to to make this game fun not only for not only for competitive diehards, but also for those who like to have fun and who likes to watch style and and uh, disrespect, even though that might have a negative connotation. <laughs> and uh, were you always disrespectful in your style of Ganon, though? You know, like when did like did you even before Giffy Cat was Giffy Cat? Were you giving catting these noobs on setups, or no? I think I was. You think you were? But only only starting from college because mm -hmm. because 
I think I think my style really originated from UC Merced mm -hmm. be because of this one rule that we had, of this one this one inside rule that we had as UC Merced players, and that's to never grab the ledge, never ledge hog, and that's all we did. We never ledge hog each other because we wanted we wanted to edge guard we we wanted to edge guard uh, like in a fun way. So that's basically where I got my. Where I uh, where I got my habit of disrespecting people, especially off the stage, you know, it's because it's because of uh, of like four years of, of habit of playing against my friend, uh, playing against my Smash friends during college. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so you played with people in college. You went to your first tournament, with Connor. You played Zoo and you lost to Zoo, and then you went into the losers bracket. Did you face any top players in losers? And did you, were you able to take any sets off anyone who was considered a top player at the time or someone like respectful to beat? It was um, there were res I mean I beat some players and they were respectful. Um, what's it called? Their skill level was really was was pretty high, like for that time. Um, like um, if I listed off the names that you guys probably wouldn't probably wouldn't know. Like Boss was a really good SoCal player back then and from and uh, he and actually. It, it was actually a close set against him, and people were actually really surprised. I think that's when people started noticing me, like when I beat Boss, and that was like, um, like this was. Oh, keep in mind again, this was two thousand nine ish, so you you probably haven't heard of these players before. But but yeah, I had some really good wins, and people were just and just uh, people were talking about me on Smashboards because Smashboards was the main was the main um, was the main community hub during that time. Like and um, and I actually had a really close set against Psycho Midget. You're familiar with Psycho Midget, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he used to be he used to be ranked also back then, and I had a really close set against him. Unfortunately, I lost to him in Poke Floats in third third match. <laughs> Believe it or not, they had those band stages. Some of the band stages back then, such as Brinstar, Poke Floats, um, and. And Cor uh, I, I'm not sure. If, yeah, Corneria. I can't believe they had Corneria back then as a as a legal stage. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I guess um, to add, just to add more to this, mm -hmm. I start starting from that. I think I got ninth place at that tournament. Yeah. And and that's really good out of like 57 people like who attended like for my first tournament, and it's just um, and then after that I, I started attending a lot more tournaments. Um, the tournament after that, again in Connor's Garage, I got seventh place, mm -hmm. and then I, and then after that, I kept on fluctuating up and down. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, how how long did it take before you kind of started traveling out of region? You know, were you oh. just like uh, going to locals as much as you could? Yeah, exactly. I was going to locals as much as I could until my. Really, until my first year in, at law school, mm -hmm. and I went to law school. I went to UC Hastings School of Law immediately after I graduated from college because I chose I chose that route in order to become a lawyer as soon as possible. But uh, but yeah, I I definitely I tra definitely traveled the most, or I started traveling a lot out out of my region starting from two thousand and uh, two thousand and thirteen. There we go. Yeah. So, so that's only, oh man, that's only three years ago. That's when I started traveling a lot. Um, I guess a no, noticeable tournament that I did go to before, right before law school, was Genesis Two, um, which was in um, it was in two thousand and eight. Yeah. And for that one, I had a really proud achievement of landing twenty fifth place for 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 a national for a I guess it was a worldwide. Yeah, as a super national, I mean, you had like everyone at the time there. It's yeah, like exactly. a very respectable place to get twenty fifth at. Yeah, so I just did I you just really happy. Did you expect that or? No. Um, actually, I did not expect anything, but I was definitely surprised at myself after the whole thing was over. I was like, "Wow, I actually made it really far!" And that's actually the first time I play Armada in winners bracket. <laughs> I see. Yeah. How did that go? Oh, it went. Oh, he he wrecked me. He <laughs> he, he first he three stalked me in in Dreamland. I don't know why I why I uh, why we ended up there. I should have I should have stricken Dreamland, and and then I got two stalked in Battlefield, and and it was just a 
it was just really, really hard to play against someone, someone that caliber. And no one actually knew about Armada back then. You know, yeah. there were some rumors about him that he's really good, but then no one, but then it was unfounded rumors, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it, he'd barely been seen really in the U.S. outside of exact one. But um, was that kind of the point where you had a realization like maybe I could be one of the best players in the game? At Genesis? Or is there a point before that where you're like, you know, you just had this amazing tournament run and you're like, wow, I really think that I can take my character, Ganon, and I can potentially be one of the top players. I think that moment was actually the time. It, it, was, it, was, at, it was at one tournament, Nice Shot Hugo. I think it was a 2011 tournament, right? It was sh- shortly before Genesis, um, Genesis 2. Yeah, I think it was that one time when there was a, it was a big, it was a big regional, and uh, and all the and a lot of top players were attending it, especially in California, and I actually was it stuck in a pool, like it was it was like a almost a death pool. It had Mango, it had Connor, it had like a bunch of other good players. So only the top, only the top two made made it out for that one, if I remember correctly. You know, or top was it top three, but yeah, I think during that time I I went one two against Connor. Connor was considered really technical and good back then. And then, oh, but then, uh, but then there's this. It was funny because I, Ma- uh, Mango he was uh, apparently uh, so according to rumors he was act- he actually had like a seven up Slurpee, like in his hand, and and apparently it had a. Uh, it had some alcohol in it, so he was actually drinking during the tournament. Like, and it was a, uh, it was, and I, I didn't know that. But then, but then, without knowing that, I just went up against him. I guess I get, I went up against drunk Mango, and then, and then, um, he went Falcon, and then I went Ganondorf. He, he did, he chose not to respect me by, by choosing his secondary because that's Mango, and then I, and then I, I think I, I think I beat him, um, uh, I beat him two zero, for that one. And they, and I think that's when like the most spurt of confidence came out of me. Mm-hmm. Even though, yeah, even though if I found out like uh, shortly afterwards about the rumors <laughs> of him actually drinking, but then but then because of that because of that like like he was knocked out of the pools actually <laughs> because he lost to me and he lost to he lost to Connor as well. So like, he was knocked out of, of the tournament. Uh-huh. And then it was like a big controversy or something like that because people were like how how can how can you let a top player like that, like that, um, just drown. get out, <laughs> drown in pools, and I and I guess I guess um, the tournament organizers they 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 stuck with their, uh, they they went against the top t- top player pr- privilege that time, <laughs> and they just they just said, oh, too bad, Mingo, you just you just out, you're out, you sh- you, sh- you shouldn't have you shouldn't have lost a biz. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so. Was that considered like a ridiculous upset? Oh yeah, that was <laughs> like just no one would have ever expected it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, all right, and ooh, that's actually I actually never knew that that you had the win over Mingo. I yeah. feel like that's very kind of just like glossed over in your history because yeah. people know you for kind of like going through the NorCal PR a bit while you were here, and you know, and okay, let's just bring it more forward to the present time though. So Evo kind of twenty thirteen was. Your first real like big Giphy Cat moment. Yeah. So, can can you talk about what went through your mind in that situation? Because it's like I don't know it's one of the classic moments of Evo 2013. <laughs> Thanks, Ashcott. Anyways, yeah, going to my my set against Lijen. Um, so it's actually funny because uh, Tafikins, uh, in his uh, he was actually like, I think he was really confident in his uh, fantasy draft, and he was like, oh. It's Bizarro versus uh, it's Bizarro versus Lijin. Dude, Lijin got this. Even though, like, he was he was considered a really good old school player back then, and he was a chic mate. So, I guess he I guess he thought that there was a there was a big advantage for him because Ganon versus Sheik. Sheik Sheik usually wins the matchup seventy thirty. Is that yeah? It's that bad, but it's still doable. Uh, but anyways, I want I really want to prove him wrong. So I just so I just. Um, so, so I just went into the mode right when I played against Lijin. I was a little bit nervous at first, but then my UC Merced friends were actually there cheering my cheering me on. Some of them, um, and I just um, and you know like 
for the for the first match, I was it was pretty even at first, but then I started noticing that he was grabbing a lot. So I did I decided to do a lot of a lot of stomps and a lot of aerials, like space aerials, and then beat out his grabs, his attempted at grabs. And then and then at that point, I was I was already um, uh, at this actually at this last stock, he was I was actually pretty uh, pretty far ahead. So I just was like, how do I destroy his spirit as much as possible, uh, and so that I can guarantee myself a win win in this set, and so that and also that that I have a bigger chance of winning two uh, zero by winning game two after this. So I decided, okay, let's just go all all in for this. Like I've done this to my UC Merced friends before as a, as a as a joke as like a raffle raffle stomp, literally, <laughs> and then I just do, and then I just. Like all of a sudden, I just get that first Darren, and then I get, and then I get the second Darren, right? And I was like, oh, if I get the third Darren, then it's gonna be, then it'll be amazing for the spectators. So then I tech, and then I read the tech chase, uh, tech roll to the right, and I got the third Darren, and then they got the, and then, and then finally got my fourth Darren. I just had to because it just looked, because I, in my mind I thought it looked so hype, and I could already hear the crowd screaming behind me so loudly, and then. And then when, after I came down with my fourth there while I was in the air, I did a last a last minute, a last set of frame possible in, in order to do an up air, which popped him to the right. And then and then as he was trying to uh, get back from the, uh, get back from the ledge, he I just fared him off the stage. And then and then right at the moment after I after I grabbed the ledge, securing myself against him, and he was and he was too far away from the ledge anyways. I was thinking, you know what? Let's make this, let's make this into the most disrespectful moment of all time. Let's just do it. I'm just going to do it for my UC Merced friends because because we because I just want to show everyone how much fun how much fun UC Merced has, especially uh, especially when we're when we're styling on each other so much. So then I just dropped down, and then and time just felt like it stopped right at the moment when my when my when Ganondorf's body was. In tangent with Sheik's body, after after her upbeat popped, and it just felt I just felt I just felt like I was actually touching Sheik at that moment, and then boom, I just I just slowly pressed down pressed down my control stick, and then pressed B, just those two button combinations, and then magic, magic happened, magic happened for the twenty four thousand. People who are viewing that moment, <laughs> and uh, that's basically how that's basically what was running through my mind right there. The disrespect. Could you hear Frog and D one just screaming after that? I actually heard. I actually heard a little bit because <laughs> uh, uh, I heard them. I mean, I heard, definitely heard them screaming, but then they were kind of far. Their yeah. setup, the commentary set was a little bit far away, but then it, it just felt really good. <laughs> it felt really damn good. Was that? kind of inspiration to become a stream pleaser because oh definitely was that like the first time you had ever like on stream giffy catted or you yes it? it was yes i would say so and then it's like you that thrill it was like yes. an adrenaline rush and you just wanted to keep doing it exactly and, and you know how stream wasn't that big back then yeah including uh, even for national tournaments there wasn't much Stream. Even Genesis 2 didn't have stream, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Not really, yeah. But Evil, they automatically had stream because it's a it's a worldwide fighting game event, convention, like tournament, you know? Mm -hmm. And of course they had stream. Like and it's and it's the first I think it's the first time that Melee really had had like a worldwide um, stream where everyone had access to it. And even the some of the fighting game players had access to the stream, and and when and I was just so glad just to see fighting game players actually talking about how hype my uh, my disrespect was. Like even outside of the Smash community, I was hearing great things about 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 how hype Melly could be because of because of what I did. And I was uh, I think I just felt so accomplished at that time. I felt really accomplished, and you know. I want to think one one of the um, I guess how would you put it one of my biggest pet peeves while playing melee was uh, was the bad section of the fighting game 
players or, or the fighting game community like just talking down on melee just saying how melee isn't the fighting game whatsoever like why the heck is why the heck is uh is melee gaining popularity and so on and you know the the, the uh the typical melee isn't the fighting game um arg like argument and i get i think i got like i think i was um out of the many issues that are out there i think that one really touched uh, really really got on my nerves the most you know Mm -hmm. I think I think that's um, I think that's part of the reason also why um, uh, what what also led to my uh, to my uh, to my sponsorship actually. But we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah we'll talk about it. But um, so going from this moment on though, it's like you had this Giphy Cat moment, and then the rise of melee is really happening at this point. Oh, yeah. You know, the scene just starts blowing up with the documentary coming out. And at this time, were you living in Northern California? Or no? Because you kind of, like, you've always jumped around California. It's kind of hard to identify you as a region because one month you're in SoCal and you get ranked, and then the next month you're in NorCal and then you get ranked, and then you move back to SoCal and then they just rank you because you're like, all right, he's probably going to do really well. Oh, um, yeah. Where so, were, so, like, when was it that you moved to NorCal for, was it, actually, no, because it was law school. But were you really involved in NorCal Melee? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I think I was more involved in NorCal Melee than SoCal Melee uh, from that point on, from, mm -hmm. from my law school. Um, just, um, yeah, I just went to as many t locals and regionals as possible. I didn't really travel out of, out of uh, state. To, uh, I didn't really never, I still never really traveled out of state. Like, I How are you doing in the locals? I was doing pretty well actually. I would, I would get like top, top, top uh, seven, top five, you know, um, like, like just close enough to uh, to get to the to, to get to the money, but but not really. Mm -hmm. But you know, I still have a I still had a great time doing it. Mm -hmm. The NorCal Dragons kind of uh, keeping their their prize pools to themselves. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then as time kind of went forward eventually you just blew up in popularity like every it felt like every morning you'd wake up and check reddit and there'd be like a different bizarro flame gif at like the front page oh yeah and um leading up to that time how was it for you because with the rise of melee as a competitive esport we saw kind of like this new community come out which is all these new players which brought in the esports life and how was the rise to fame for you and it was, I I wouldn't have traded this this opportunity to become the president of the United States. I really wouldn't have. It was great, mm -hmm. the fame, the the names, just people people always people always saying good things about you. Like not even one bad word about you. It was it was like the most amazing amazing time of my life, and I just. And I think um, I I had actually um, I wasn't diagnosed with um, with anything really, but I I really think that I really think that I did have some form of uh, uh, some depression back then before even beforehand, and I had like a total lack of self confidence. But then I guess it was a really really transformative stage for me because because I just learn how to like deal with people a lot uh, i just and i pe people were doing nothing uh people did nothing but encourage me like it was definitely a life-changing experience and and i and i think every person who supported me uh, ever since then really really affected my um really affected the totality of my life even for the future i would say so that's basically how i, I would put it Yeah, it was. 
I guess. I guess oh I just... wait, I, I my mic was actually muted. Sorry, let me repeat that. No, 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 uh, no, it no, no, for the stream. It was muted for the stream. Oh, for the stream. But uh, Please, so the uh, question really quickly was that you were giphy catting and you know you were gaining fame for all this style, but it was hurting you a little bit because in order to go for these disrespectful moments, you could not play optimally because you would be putting yourself at a risk to go for more dares, warlock punches, up tilts. But when was it, and why did you decide to stop styling and? to start going for what we call the challenge, which is going far in bracket. It's really hard to pinpoint to tell the truth right now. I think, um, actually, you know what, Ashkan, I'm actually, um, I'm actually getting kind of thirsty right now. Um, and I might need to freshen up a little bit. So, uh, can we, uh, can, uh, can we just take a, like just a quick two minute break before I answer this question? Thanks. All right, thanks. Sorry. All look uh, the same. All right, Whatever. well, we got some downers already from Zaro Flame. One of his most favorite moves. Oh, gets yeah. sort of battlefielded, although that would have happened on any stage, to be honest. Yeah, so already twice we've seen this matchup on screen, but literally the first two matches. Yeah, which whoa, is really there's that down smash again. Ooh. Although this time I'm anticipating it. Oh, wow! Single hit Nair into forward air. That yeah. was disgusting. That's that's actually, I think that's the first thing that Bizarro Flame was known for before he became the Giffy Cat Fiend, was starting combos with neutral air. Uh, I remember on his FC Legacy Smash trading card, that was his uh, special ability, which is start a combo with down air. <laughs> down Smash also just a good move in general against uh, newer players because it covers roll options really well. You know, True. and it can cover it can cover rolls against better players too. Yeah, uh, that's the uh, the silent specter. Yeah, tech chase, uh, the down smash, two options covered. Oh my god, <laughs> Jason is styling. Oh. 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 Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's bring back Calvin. Calvin looks like from UW University of Washington. Yeah. Oh. oh. Looks like he was a little late on that one. I was right about him being a Pacific Northwest Smasher, though. That's true. I just, I get them all mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's not my fault. Cool. Yeah, so Bizarro Flame definitely moving around a lot more than Poop was. Just about. Just give me 10, 10 seconds. Yeah, it is. Oh. Uh, are you're not uh, you muted yourself, right, for stream? We're I'm just. Oh wait, uh, can you, you they can me? hear you. They can hear you. Bad miscommunication. Are right, you ready to resume this interview? I'm ready. Let's so see. the question was, when did you want to start making this change? It's it's hard to pinpoint myself. It was it was definitely sometime in 2015, like you said, but. You know, just um, you know, I, um, I already got the, like I was thinking to myself, I already got the fame, and I, and people already know that I can I, that I can style and disrespect very well. So I want to focus on another part in order to further improve myself. Mm -hmm. So I so I dedicate so I dedicate a, a period of time of taking this game um, hyper competitively, and just. Um, just uh, advancing my character even, even more and more. Mm -hmm. And I did this not, not because, um, not not because of, of obviously not because of styling or for, or for entertaining, entertaining people like it directly per se. But I thought about what Eichelman told me, and he he told me this. Um, Play, uh, don't play for yourself. Don't play for for others. Uh, play for Ganondorf. And I and I didn't take this completely in um, into heart, but you know I just I was thinking that I, I do want to have a part of advancing my character and and of, um, of 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 improving my character even further. So I decided to take that route because I because I know that. I know that 
that no matter what happens, I'll still maintain my popularity, and I'll, I'll still, and um, and I and I don't think there was anything really to lose by taking my character to another level. So I really trained hard, really tried to get my get my character um, past everyone's expectation. Um, I guess I guess people people nowadays they will say that I do get good placings for Ganondorf, like. I think whenever I do attend tournaments, like I think I'll be, I'll probably be the highest placing, one, of the, uh, either the highest placing Gandorf or, or maybe, or maybe, or maybe second top placing Gandorf at the tournament, depending on how the bracket seating sometimes. Um, uh, but then to me that wasn't thinking about it now to to this day. I'm still not satisfied with my performance. Especially because I did, because to this day I still did I still did not uh, break out of I still did not make top twenty five um, at a at a national that uh, that recently and and the thing is that some people some people when I tell uh, when I tell this to, uh, to them they say hey but but Kings of Cali Kings Kings of Cali four you actually got ninth place but I was, but then I'm I'm thinking. That that was more of a regional to tell the truth. Uh, it was a super regional, but it was it was not like a it was not like a national, let alone a super national. And you know, I'm just uh, I'm just going to keep on pushing my character, even even while even while I'm an attorney. And I just I just really think that I can make a more more of a difference in this world, not just the Smash world, but but the world in general because. Because to tell the truth, I think, I think playing Gandorf is really, is really, um, it's really ironic for me, because I think it's a good reflection of how, of how, of how the. <laughs> I'm sorry to go into race and politics right now, but I think that's basically what, what Asian Americans are to uh, nowadays. You know, they're they're mid tier. You know, they, they can do well in real life, but then they still have. They definitely have some disadvantages some, um, in the in the professional field, and mm -hmm. that's and that's basically exactly that's basically how 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 Ganondorf is, you know. And I just and I think the character just fits me very well be, because of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'll never give up, whether I'm an attorney or whether I'm whether I'm playing Smash or Melee. I'll never give up because I know that there's endless amount of, amount of potential and, and possibilities in this world, and you just have to, you just have to grasp the moment, and you just have to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. I see. That's actually really cool to hear. And I mean, like, you really did take it pretty far. I feel, like Apex twenty fifteen, you were just out of the cusp of making the top thirty two bracket, mm -hmm. and I mean, you even went so far to even taking a game off Armada, and I'm not yelling. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was, I mean, with all this success though, you did see a sponsorship come too. Oh yeah, and um, do you want to talk about that a bit? Because it was—it's kind of one of the more controversial sponsorships in the esports scene. Yellow oh, Pages, Bizarro Flame, Team YP. Yeah, <laughs> of, course, <laughs> but, um, of course. You know, when you first got into that sponsorship, were you afraid of the backlash that would come because of its controversial backing? I was a little bit, but something told me just to go for it, and I think I had very good justifications for doing so. First of all, I mentioned before that the fighting game community has a stigma uh, against the Smash community, especially especially that one meme. Uh, is I think there's this one stereotype that is perfectly um, uh, that's perfectly represented by this one meme. It's like a it's like this one meme had like a picture of like like different real life everyday uh, events, and and some of them were. And then some labels were attached to those pictures, such as Guilty Gear, Street Fighter, um, Street Fighter Third Strike, and then and then for Super Smash Brothers Melee, there was like a picture of babies playing, you know. <laughs> and I was, um, I think that's um, that was one of the most. Uh, I think, I think if 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 they did that just to be troll, just be trolls, they did a very good job because I was. Uh, because I didn't, I didn't like that. Um, I really didn't like uh, like that stigma against Smash players. 
So, and the thing is that Team YP around that time, they did not want to, uh, they, they only had one, one game picked up and that was CSGO. And, the, and everyone was wondering during that time, or a lot of people were wondering during that time, hey, if Team YP picks up a fine game, what would it be? And you know what? I nabbed that opportunity. I nabbed it. And, and I, was, I, was very, I was very glad when Team, when team YP put up, put, up, uh, uh, put up the news, put the news of me up being a sponsored player, being their sponsored player, um, as, being the fir- as being their first sponsored fine game player. And the, and and I think I think I had the I had the best feeling when I read into when I went into uh, subreddit Kappa, uh, and and seeing the news of me becoming the first uh, fine game player, and then and then peop, and then there was actually a comment like a like a like a hilarious comment on there that I just found hilarious that that was just uh, that just knocked me out it was a uh, it was quote unquote how. How the how the fuck did Super Smash Brothers um, get sponsored before any other fine game for for Team YP? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just really I think that was a I think even though if there were some negative ramifications, I think in a I think in a um, in not so much of an explicit way, I I did shape some perceptions on Smash players over. Uh, overall, from the fine game community, especially because they all knew that that mm-hmm. uh, that uh, Team YP, one of the most adult um, organizations, was uh, was sponsoring was sponsoring a th- at the time a, thir- a twelve to thirteen year old like game that seemed like it was it was a party game for for kids, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so I really I really like that. Um, the second thing that I really uh, that. Uh, this the second reason why I really took advantage of this opportunity to be sponsored was because uh, be- was because of um, was because of my ethnicity and as uh, and as a uh, as just an Asian male in general because they're really stigmatized in in that in that particular type of business and I just really thought that it would be helpful it would be helpful even though if I even though if I'm I am classified as uh, as a video video game nerd I think it really I just want to make a difference in the world, and I just, I just want to, I, I just, I just uh, wanted people to be more, to associate, like, um, to associate Asian male with more, with more of that type of field because I just, did, I really didn't like the stigma of, of Asian males being uh, desexualized um, from, from like the media and so on. So, so that's why I, I really thought that it was a good decision on my part. Um, to, to make the world, I mean, to, to change the world in that way, and, and a lot of people don't think about it that way, I guess. But that's 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 definitely def, that's definitely one of my uh, secret intentions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you you talked a bit about like the neg- negative repercussions. Yeah. Were you afraid of kind of hurting ties with your professional career or with anyone else as a result of the Team YP contract? Not really, because. Because attorneys don't have souls anyway, so I don't think they would care. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't think um, I, I wasn't too concerned about the professional corporation about professional uh, law corporations. And you know, they might. I was thinking they might even take it positively because they might because a large corp a large law uh, law firm might think that that uh, that the main corporation supporting uh, the one that the one that funds uh, the Team YP. Mm-hmm. Could could possibly could possibly be one of this big clients, and and in the in the legal business, like big clients are are pretty much bread and butter of, of their life. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? It's just um, Let's you just can go for it. Yeah, just go for it. You can spin anything to your uh, uh, anything positively in your way as long as as long as you take the opportunity to explain how how uh, how uh, like as long as you shape the perception mm-hmm. of certain events. And, you know, as you played and played, you eventually graduated law school. Um, How was it when you were approaching your bar exam? Because I know during then it was like right before Evo and you made the decision to go to Salty Sweet Kage. Mm -hmm. And what was going through your mind in that period? Because it was such a critical period of your life. Yeah, it was um, was definitely, it's definitely the, 
uh, one of the most critical points in my life. Like I had to decide whether to whether to keep uh, whether to focus more on my bar exam or 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 whether to train up for a kage. And truthfully, I did not train candidates with uh, with anyone bef uh, like shortly beforehand, or even or even somewhat beforehand. Like I think the most I I did was play against Mr. Brandendorf. But that was only in tournament. That was only like at the um, during the bracket at the at the weekly foundry tournament, and he was and he and I weren't there every time. So so that's the only opportunity of candidates I had um, to actually practice. And I just um, I, I definitely devoted a lot of time time um, studying for the bar exam because because that was um, because that was definitely the crux it was that i mean it's def it's uh becoming a lawyer was something i wanted to become since i was since i was a uh, two or three years old and i guess and i guess um going to the um focusing on my legal career def uh, i guess it definitely um definitely took priority rather than practicing for that match even though if i really wanted to do well for my fans but then for that time i th i think my my family needed it more because uh, because my father is uh, his health health wise he wasn't doing well so he could, he couldn't um, so he, he couldn't practice he couldn't practice much law anymore so there had to be a breadwinner in my family so and and I guess uh, and because and because I uh, because I study a lot and, and I pass the bar I'm able to support them to this day and and you know you know what it's just um, my my loss against Kaya was. The, definitely uh definitely hit me hard but but um but um uh, but luckily the bar exam was only was only a month was only like a three or four weeks after after kagi's match so i was like okay i lost big but you know what i'm going to take this negative energy and just turn it into a positive energy and just study as much for the for the bar exam as possible and i did pass the first time um and i found that out on december of last year 2015 and and because of that I got a, I got a good, uh, I got a good job. Um, although I did quit my job to, to move with to move in with PP2 in uh, in, uh, um, in early um, early this year. But I got an, but luckily I got another full time job just uh, earlier this month. And I I would definitely say it's worth it. But I just to this day I still have I really I still have nightmares actually about uh, not not because not because I not not because of myself about of my performance but of but of uh disappointing my fans to tell the truth and i just um and it's just you know like it's especially especially knowing that some of my fans uh, like some of my fans actually like like they actually bet like anywhere from like a small to a um to, to a large amount of money in my uh, in my favor and just the way that I performed i just i just um it just really hits hard even nowadays, and mm -hmm. and I never I never had the courage to um, to uh, to apologize to um, to my fans out there for not performing well that day, but but uh, but I guess I guess now I can just uh, I can just apologize for um, for not for not training as much as I as I could have uh, for for that for that match uh, for my for my uh, salty sweet match against Kage for disappointing disappoints um, so many people and just um and i just um i think it was definitely definitely one of the hardest moments of my life although although i did learn a lot from it so yeah i'm just um i'm and i'm just and i'm not even sure if i'm if i'm even ready like like for for another salty sweet soon because uh because I'm I'm still going through a lot. There's still like, um, I don't know. This uh, life has been life has been really weird to me. Actually, I just yeah, I just just yeah, so so much. I guess a lot, 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 a lot more things happen when you get older. And yeah, life, that just catches you by by the throat. I mean, like no one really holds it against you that you wanted to study for the bar exam more than practice the money match for Kage, given. You know the bar is one of the hardest exams you can take in the history of like exams. But I mean, 
moving forward into the future though like now at least like it's been a while since we've really seen you you know since you moved down you moved in with Pew Pew too and um what's the future for you looking like now because you're working full time big job big time law job what's what's in the future well, you know, I just, I just want to, well, it's always been my long, long time dream to become the best attorney, especially trial, uh, litigation trial attorney. But halfway, about like two thirds into my life, I found a new, found a new joy in my life and that is Super Smash Brothers Melee and, and probably, and even, even Smash 4 because I'm pick, I'm starting to pick that game up also. But I would just, uh, I would just have to say that I'm, I'm ready to give it my all for both, for both my, my profession and my hobby. And as long, and because I'm in my, I'm in the peak, peak of my adulthood. I am, I'm 25 years old, about to turn 26, and the late 20s is basically the best. It's not the most money. Uh, most income earning period of your life, but it's definitely the most eventful and the most meaningful point of your life. So therefore, I am going to try my best for both fields, including including my professional legal field and and my Super Smash Brothers Melee uh, uh, professional uh, professional career. So that's that's what I'm going to have to say. I'm still going to practice on stream. I'm so I'm so going I'm so going to stream and practice on there. I'm so going to attend local and regionals, and and you know arguably I can attend national tournaments as long as they're only one like one or two day tournaments. But I cannot. I don't think I have enough time for three day tournaments. But I'll still try my best for my fans. I'll try my best for everyone, and I uh, and I think most most importantly, like PP2 said, I'll try my best for myself. Mm -hmm. It's really good to hear. Are we going to be seeing you at Evo this year or no? Probably not. Uh, the thing is, I'm planning to to attend day day two and part of day three. Mm -hmm. I cannot, uh, unfortunately, I cannot attend day one, which means that I cannot. Uh, that means that I won't. Um, uh, I'll I'll probably be DQ'd for um, day one, obviously. So I think I'm just going to go there just to um, just to. Uh, just to see my fans and just to encourage them and uh, play friendlies against top players and uh, and fans alike. I'll try I try squeezing as many games as possible mm -hmm. because I love the community. I I love I love my supporters. I love the I love all the players. Uh, no matter no matter how well or how badly they treat me, we're we're still part of a fan, we're still a community, and and what one member of the community does it affects it affects everyone else, and and and. Through 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 thick and tough. I love I love this community, and I would I definitely wouldn't have made it this far, including my including as, as uh, as as an as an attorney without without your guy without the Smash community without without the game, without the fans. I and I really I would really like to take this time to thank to thank every each and every one of you for. Just 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 for being awesome. That's really good to hear, and um, you know you've tweeted, been tweeting a bit about your life, and there's been some exciting news in the personal life of Bizarro. You're engaged, with a child on the way, right? Yeah, but um, it's gonna be. Is that gonna be a huge block, or you're just gonna keep going and pushing the passions? Well, um, prefer prefer not to talk about that right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. That's understandable. I mean, I mean, uh, you can talk about any, uh, like anything be, uh, besides that topic. But, okay. Uh, I can talk. I can talk. Talk about the engagement. Yeah. I okay. mean, that, that was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Are you getting engaged soon? Or you are engaged, but and whatnot. Yeah. Just keep on. Um, keep on pushing the date back because uh, I guess things just get in the way. So we just. Mm -hmm. um, but we're we're definitely uh, we're. We're ho definitely hoping for uh, f uh, for the wedding date to be to be by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Um, that's about really it for the topics that 
I have. Um, is there anything that you wanted to say? Anyone you wanted to thank? Any shout outs? Well, I just uh, I just gotta say this. Remember, you guys are you guys are amazing. Each and every one of you have have a, uh, an amazing amount of untapped untapped potential. Look at me. I was I was an oversheltered kid back then. I I thought I had nothing to live for back back then. But look at how look at how much look at how much I've accomplished. I don't want to sound narcissistic, but it's just I mean just um, I'm just I'm just going to say look look. Uh, just, uh, just look at how much I've done, and I'm going to do a lot more. But it all comes, to, it all comes from down within. Sure, there's a little bit of, of luck associated with it, but hey, if you don't try, then you might as well die. <laughs> well, uh, well, that that might that might be a little bit too negative for you guys, but uh, but you know, like, um, but always, uh, I was just say, always try your best. You know, might might as well try because you, you you lose nothing. You lose nothing by trying. You know, you lose nothing. Uh, you lose nothing from being positive, and you just and everyone everyone is just special in their own ways. I just I I love like I love everyone uh, each each and every person individually. Just um, like no matter uh, no matter what they have done, because uh, because we're all we're all humans, and I don't think there's anything to gain by by having any uh, by holding a grudge against someone. You know, just uh, live life, live life to the fullest, and 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 happy styling and disrespecting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, you know, thank you for joining me today. Um, you can follow Jason Bizarre Yoon at Twitch at Bizarre underscore Flame, also his Twitter, and you can check out his YouTube channel for all clips of his stream highlights of just Bizarro Flame. Um, you can follow me at Ashgon, at Ashgon underscore, and this interview will be uploaded later to Ashgon91 on YouTube. Uh, I just want to say thank you once again for joining me today, Jason. No problem, Ashgon. And Thanks I, for, yeah, thank you very much for asking such great questions and being such a great interviewer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I look forward to the chance of seeing you again in the future, and uh, I hope you the best of luck. Thanks so much, Ashcon. All right, thanks. Definitely a great friend, man. <laughs>